I'm having so much fun, I feel like I must be dreaming. Mikota senpai looks so different in her casual clothes, so cool and grown up. Every time I look over at her beside me, my stomach flutters. Chiyori. At the aquarium, I watch her smile out of the corner of my eye. When she says my name, my heart skips a beat. This is so different to when we walk home together. We chatter easily together and eat desserts. Mikoto senpai manages to be gorgeous even when she's eating. Out by the sea, Mikoto senpai tells me about herself. She opens up to me about her complex feelings towards her sister. She's ashamed of the part of her that's jealous of Yumi. I feel like we've gotten closer to one another. Like we're a real couple. But then... Am I being a good girlfriend? After I say it, I see Mikoto Senpai's surprised, distressed face, and I realize I shouldn't have said anything. All I want is for her to smile. At first, I just wanted to make things work with the person who asked me out. But somewhere along the line, she became all I could think about. I wanted to be her girlfriend for real. Even though we barely know, know each other, even though it's only been a few days since we started interacting properly, I'm starting to want this more and more. After all, I'm supposed to be her girlfriend. I want to think I'm, that I'm moving in the right direction. Mikoto-senpai wa... Mikoto-senpai, why did you ask me out? I know I should stop talking. I know that her answer will only hurt me. Yet I'm compelled to ask. Mikoto-senpai's expression is pained. I didn't mean to upset her. I know she must have had her reasons. I was blackmailed. Voice trembling, Mikoto Senpai tells me everything. It told me to confess my feelings to you and ask you out. If I didn't, they said they'd hurt Yumi. What the? At first, I wrote it off as a prank. But I was just so on edge, worrying that something was going to happen to Yumi. So I decided that if it'd keep Yumi safe, I'd go along with it. She tells me she received a blackmail letter that told her to ask me out that they threatened to hurt Yumi if she didn't. The words tumble from her lips. She doesn't sound like she's lying. She's kept this a secret for me this whole time. She must have been hurting too. As she trembles, I want to reach out and touch her. I want to take her hand in mine. But I know I'm not worthy. She's only with me because of some blackmail letter. Despite all the fun I've had with her, we're no more than strangers to one another. You thought I was the one who sent the letter. You thought I was blackmailing you, and that's why you were so cold to me. I'm really sorry, but I know now that it wasn't you. 
でも最初は分からなくてだから私 But I didn't at first, so I. I always wondered about her reasons. But I never imagined it was blackmail. Although I figured there was something going on with her, I still wanted to believe she liked me. How could I ever have guessed that in reality she resented me because she thought I was blackmailing her? It's okay. I hear my voice shaking even though I reassure her. I was the one who asked her. I was the one who thought I was ready to hear it. But blackmail never even crossed my mind. The truth is heavier and more depressing than I imagined. She never had the slightest hint of feelings for me. She didn't ask me out because she liked me. It's not her fault. She just did what she had to, for Yumi's sake. While I went and made my own assumptions, I selfishly convinced myself I could make this work. I get off the train, leaving Mikoto Senpai behind. I think back on everything I just heard. Mikoto Senpai treated me so harshly because she thought I was her blackmailer. It all makes sense now. It does. It's crystal clear. There was a reason behind everything she did. Behind her cold and disdainful gaze, even when she's walking home with me. Behind her apology to me when she realized I wasn't the culprit. Behind her finally engaging with me, even though she showed interest in my shuttle tatting. Even though she seemed to be having so much fun at the aquarium today. That all seems like the distant past now. My chest aches so much I can hardly breathe. It was fun while it lasted. Mikoto Senpai's words and actions had me on an emo emotional roller coaster. She came into my plain, boring life and made it shine. Each day was new and exciting. Writing letters to her, sending her my lace bookmarks. I felt like, thanks to her, my dull life was changing. I wanted her to love me, and I thought I was allowed to want that. After all, she had asked me to be her girlfriend. But now, I know the reason behind that, and it's okay. I know she never meant for things to be like this. I know that it's been eating her up inside too. So it's okay. Besides, it's not even been that long since we started dating. It's only been a few days since we really started talking. That's not long at all. I didn't get in too deep. It should be easy for me to forget. That's what I need to do. Just go back to the life I led before. <laughs> I look up at the sky. It's going to rain soon. I should get back home. Before it starts to pour. <laughs> Something inside me breaks. Tears roll up in my eyes and slide down my cheeks. I can't let anyone see me like this. I have to stop crying. There isn't even anything for me to cry about. I know she had a reason for what she did. And I always knew Mikoto Senpai didn't really have feelings for me. I just tried to avoid that fact by making excuses to myself. Right from the start, I knew I should ask her, yet I didn't. Because I was scared of the answer. I wanted her to like me. I wanted her to tell me it was okay to like her back. I wanted to think of myself as Mikoto Senpai's girlfriend. Rain starts to fall. 
I slump down where I am. My hair, clothes, and bags are all getting soaked. The fabric of my clothes is heavy, sticking to my skin. I'm cold. What am I doing? I need to go home. I didn't know I could scream so loud. I bawl like a child. Raindrops mingle with my tears and trail into my mouth. My sopping clothes slide against my skin. I cry and cry and cry. I love her. I love to senpai I've gone and fallen for her completely. I love the way she smiles at me. I blush whenever she tells me I'm cute. I never imagined someone would ever say that about me. All the compliments she gives me make me smile wider than I ever had before. <laughs> but it's too late now. We can't go back to those... Halcon days. She was only dating me because she was blackmailed into it. She doesn't have any feelings for me. I was so happy, feeling like I meant something to her. It was only for a few days, but I can't forget about her. I don't want to lose her. She's a kind person, so I'm sure those smiles were real. She doesn't like me the way I do her. I have to face up to that fact. After all, I originally said yes to her, simply hoping it could lead to a friendship. That's all it was. There's no going back. But she quickly became so much more to me. I want to go back. If I had just kept my mouth shut and not asked her why, could have kept dating her in ignorant bliss. There's no going back. I, I want to go back. I wish I never learned the truth. I wish she kept lying to me. I cry my eyes out for a good long while. Then I slink back home. Thankfully, my parents are out. I take a shower and toss my wet clothes in the laundry. My head is still a mess. My eyes hurt and I feel dizzy. But crying has helped a little. Now that I'm thinking more clearly, my thoughts turn to the blackmail letter. Someone sent Mikoto Senpai a blackmail letter, and that's why she asked me out. But why me? She said it was probably some form of harassment, but I don't understand how I was brought into it. There are plenty of people out there who have a crush on Mikoto Senpai. I wonder if things would have been better for her if she was paired up with one of them. All the starting point would still be blackmail if it was someone else. Maybe she would have actually fallen for them. No, I have to stop thinking like that. Tears are threatening to fall again. <laughs> I need to write her a letter. The culprit is still out there, and they could be keeping an eye on us. So we should probably keep pretending to date, for Yumi's sake. I don't know what would happen if we broke up. Maybe she'd be blackmailed into dating someone else. And I don't want that. I don't want her to date anyone else. <laughs> Thank you for such a wonderful day. I get that far and then my hand starts to shake as I think back on the day. I really did have such a good time. 
I hope I could see Mikoto-senpai in her casual clothes again. Even though I now know the truth, I still have to pretend to be her girlfriend. But I can't blame Mikoto-senpai for that. It's not her fault. I enjoy talking with her, and she doesn't seem to mind being around me. So the best thing to do is just carry on as before. But... I don't know what to write. I've always had so many ideas, but now I'm coming up empty. What to write? I had so much fun, I felt like I was dreaming. Maybe it was a dream. At least it's probably easier to think of it that way. Then the Black letter would be a dream too, and I could do everything over from the start. I write the letter in fits and starts, occasionally pausing to cry. When the next day dawns, I barely slept a wink. I slipped the short letter into Mikoto Senpai's shoe locker. In the end, I wrote the bare minimum. I only wrote where and when to meet. What am I supposed to do from here on out? In the classroom, I try to act as normally as possible. Thinking that chatting with my friends will distract me, I try to banish the thoughts of Mikoto Senpai from my mind. But as the day wears on, it gets harder and harder to bear. After class, I wait for Mikoto Senpai by the entrance. <sighs> Although our relationship hasn't actually changed much, my heart feels heavy. As much as I'm trying not to, I can't stop thinking about Mikoto Senpai. Shiori! Before long, Mikoto Senpai arrives, waving to me the same as usual. Her smile is the same as usual too, yet I sense something closed off about her. Sorry I'm late. Yeah. Oh no, it's fine. I try to smile, but I'm not sure how it looks. Ready to go? Hi. We walk the path home, just as we have done these past few days. Just a short while ago, I desperately cast around for conversation topics and have observed her reactions. At one point, I was overjoyed to elicit even the barest of responses. Then talking with her became easy and fun, and the chatter flowed out of me like water. But now, all of my words have deserted me. Thank you for yesterday, I had a really good time. Me too. Was Yumi okay? Nothing happened while you were out? Nope, nothing to worry about. I knew she'd be fine, really. I'm just paranoid. It's all good now. I'm glad to hear that. I want to say more, but I can't. I can't even look at her. Want to hang out again sometime? I hesitate. I don't know if she means it or if she's just being polite. I'd love to. I answer with a smile. I'm trying my best to act normally, but it's not going well. Kura-senpai seems a little awkward, like she can tell something's up. But now that she's told me everything, there's probably no reason for her to fake being friendly with me. I'm sorry about yesterday. It's fine. 
I wasn't going to say anything. I'm really, I really am sorry. You don't need to apologize. I'm the one who wanted to know. After checking to make sure there's no one around, I asked my question that's been on my mind. Could I ask you about the blackmail letter? Sure. When did you receive it? A little while before I asked you out. I ignored it at first, thinking it was just some sick prank. But... But then it started to feel like Yumi was being held hostage, and I was on edge all the time. I'm sure I'd feel the same way if I were in her shoes. As much as I'd want to write it off as a prank, the possibility of someone getting hurt would eat away at me. And then Yumi actually got hurt. What? Is she okay? She's fine. It was probably an accident, but at the same time, I couldn't be sure. That's when I decided to go through with it. The more she tells me, the better I understand her turmoil. It must have been really hard for her. The safety of her precious sister was being held over her head. And so, she had started dating me, the person she believed could be responsible for it. I can't blame her. So, um... I'm sorry for being selfish and hurting you. I really do think you're a nice girl. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I genuinely enjoy talking with you. Okay. I don't get along well with other girls. I'm not good at making friends. But being around you is easy. It's like I can be myself. The things I felt with you and the fun I've had are real. Mikoto Senpai doesn't strike me as a particularly good liar. She's forthright about her emotions, that's why she was so obviously resentful of me at the start. And why she was immediately nicer to me after she realized I wasn't the blackmailer. So I didn't tell you about the blackmail letter to try and get rid of you or anything. I just couldn't keep lying to you. I understand. Thank you. Sorry. Please stop apologizing. It's not your fault. I know this must have been really hard for you, too. And I'm really glad to know that you care. Thank you for caring so much about me. I mean it.
hearing that she cares for me, that she enjoys being around me, I believe her. And it makes me so happy I could cry. Yet at the same time, the knowledge that she means it only as a friend pierces my heart. I have no idea why my name was in that black mail letter. But I like to think it wasn't all bad, since it brought us together as friends. Thanks, Shiori. I really appreciate that. I've been worrying about it since yesterday. I thought you might never want to speak to me again. I can't deny that I was shocked. But I enjoy hanging out with you too. I know we still have the blackmail to worry about, but even aside from that, it'd be nice if we could keep walking home together at least. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like that too. I feel terrible for getting you involved in all of this. Don't beat yourself up about it. You didn't do anything wrong. Thanks. I'll just try not to think about it too much. Mikoto Senpai wants us to keep going as we were before. I'll keep it together so we can go back to how things were. But why on earth would someone blackmail you in the first place? I have no idea. I could understand if they wanted to mess with me, but putting Yumi in danger? That's unforgivable. And the longer this goes on, the more I resent them. I recall how that resentment and frustration was leveled at me. Uh, sorry, I'm really dragging down the mood, huh? No, it's absolutely understandable you'd feel that way. Do you think it would have been better if I'd turn you down? Mm, I discussed that with a friend of mine. She said that... I might have just gotten another letter telling me to try someone else. They would have kept harassing you? Yeah, if it all ended with you turning me down, the blackmail wouldn't amount to much, would it? The more we talk about it, the more I wonder what this is all for. Why? 
Why would someone want to make life hard for you? If it's someone you rejected, then surely they have feelings for you. Why would someone want to hurt someone they like? You're so nice. No, I'm not. I think that's a fairly normal attitude. I agree. But people have all kinds of different thought processes. For some people, rejection twists their feelings into hatred. If they're sad, they want the other person to be sad. Or if they can't be loved by them, they want to make them suffer. That's so awful. It makes me sad to think that there are people like that out there and that Mikoto Senpai is suffering because of one of them. It's not like her suffering will bring them true happiness. I feel bad saying this, but I'm glad it was you. I'm glad they blackmailed me into dating someone as nice as you. Me too. Of course, I don't like how it happened, but I'm glad it brought us together. Not that I'm grateful to the blackmailer or anything. Of course not. I mean, Yumi's still in danger, even now. Exactly. I haven't received any more letters since then, but it could just be a matter of time. She lets out a heavy sigh. It's clear that Yumi is the most important thing in her world. I already knew that, yet the thought makes my heart ache. I know that Mikoto Senpai cares about me, but only as a friend. I'm glad for that, and I want to respond in kind. But at the same time, it hurts. I really do love her. She's so kind, she felt bad about what she was doing. She said she liked being around me. My heart feels fit to burst with affection. I have to let it go. I have to be content with just being friends. If I try to push it any further, it'll only make things harder for her. I decide to write a letter. Just like I've been doing every day. I tell her about the things hap that happened during my day, conversations I had with friends. I ask her whether she tried shuttle tatting again. I used to feel so excited, but now each stroke of my pen brings with only pain. I write the letters on the verge of tears. It hurts because I love her. I never knew how much it would hurt to love someone who doesn't love you back. <laughs> 